This is a patient who had a panoptic toric lens placed. The lens has one haptic in the bag and one haptic from the sulcus. The yellow arrow points to a radial tear that uh, can be seen at 6 o'clock. And the arrows here point to the collapsed capsule under the IOL, which is in the sulcus on the temporal side. This is causing an UGG syndrome. A decision was made to reposition the lens in the capsular bag as close to the correct axis as possible. Ideally, this lens should be at about the 165 axis, and it's at the 180 degrees axis. So here we are going under the anterior capsule rim with viscoelastic, which is uh, being injected through a LASIK cannula with a spatulated tip. I've uh, identified the anterior capsule flap that is uh, going out radial at 6 o'clock, and I've come under that, and I'm coming along the top of the uh, haptic that's within the capsular bag to uh, try to dissect open the anterior and posterior capsule uh, fusion uh, that exists uh, here. And I'm doing this sequentially. I'm using the pressure from the viscoelastic within the enclosed space of the fused capsule to uh, pop it open uh, like you would blow up a balloon. Um, I'm working my way around from each side because the um, capsular bag uh, in the lower right hand corner uh, here uh, runs out a bit and I cannot see the extent of it. And I suspect there might be a, a radial tear in that area uh, at about um, 5 o'clock on the screen. Uh, so I'm trying to uh, open the capsular bag here as much as I can. Uh, given that I cannot see completely out to the periphery of the anterior capsule extent in this area. Um, here I think I freed things up about as much as possible, uh, and I'm going back to the other side with the spatulated LASIK cannula to break any uh, adhesions that might exist. And now I'm going to grab the haptic, which is in the sulcus, and uh, find the tip of it which I think has been irritating the iris from the back surface. And I'm going to try to place this under the anterior capsule rim uh, that I've clearly identified uh, at about 7 o'clock. And we're going to now tuck this uh, haptic in and under the anterior capsule rim. And you can see um, repositioning the um, haptic optic junction as much as I can under the anterior capsule rim. Uh, but the problem is that um, I think there may be some uh, fusion of the anterior and posterior capsule uh, far out in the periphery where I cannot see it uh, under my iris retractor. So um, I feel I'm going to probably need to rotate this lens a little bit to get this haptic completely within the capsular bag fornix. I'm trying to reposition it again here, but I, I just feel like there is some resistance uh, in the peripheral capsular bag that's preventing me from really seating it properly. So I feel that uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and need to rotate the lens a bit uh, to get it into a different axis, which means freeing up the haptic on the other side. So here I'm going to grab this haptic which was within the capsular bag fornix and fibrosed in. And I'm going to very carefully tease this uh, haptic and strip the tip which is fibrosed right in the area where the radial tear extends out. So I have to be very careful. Uh, and now the lens is able to be mobilized and rotated. And I'm going to push this uh, haptic optic junction into the um, capsular bag fornix. And I can feel the lens seating a little bit better within the capsular bag fornix. I still feel like this haptic, though, may not be completely in the capsular bag fornix. So I'm going to rotate it into the capsular bag fornix completely at this point, which means the lens ends up a little bit further away from the intended visual axis uh, than I would like it to be. Here you can see me rotating the lens into the capsular bag later. Um, here I'm reseating it. Um, 
And there are some steps that have been edited out, uh, removal and replacement of viscoelastic, for example. Uh, but here I can feel that the haptic is really totally within the bag. Uh, and I'm going to rotate the lens 180 degrees to try to make sure that the uh, haptics uh, break any adhesions uh, between the anterior posterior capsule as they remain securely under the anterior capsule rim and within the equator of the bag and try to find the best and safest position to lead this lens where I don't have to worry about that temporal haptic uh, on the bottom of the screen uh, coming up out of the capsule or bag that there's anterior capsule covering it. So here I'm rotating the lens and um, right in about this position I can feel it under the anterior capsule rim and pretty securely positioned. And uh, with, over here in this position is pretty close to the intended axis which is about 165 degrees. Um, I'm a little bit off of that, maybe about 15, 20 degrees, but you know that it's only a T3 lens, so uh, that will only leave about uh, a diopter of astigmatism, which I can correct at the slit lamp if I need to. I'm using a slit lamp LRI. Um, so I'm going to, um, at this point, uh, reseat the haptic because after I removed viscoelastic, I felt it moved a little bit. Uh, and here I'm reseating the haptic under the anterior capsule where I feel it's uh, very secure. And now uh, instead of removing the viscoelastic with INA, I'm going to burp the viscoelastic that's remaining out of the anterior chamber. And this will push the uh, lens back into the capsule or bag rather than uh, shallowing the chamber which could cause it to come out. Um, I'm injecting myocol, which will bring the pupil down. And uh, the lens feels centered and secure, and the case uh, is completed. Uh, the next day in the office at the slit lamp, the lens appears to be well centered. The yellow arrow shows the anterior capsule. The lens is clearly under that. Uh, this view on the temporal side shows that the lens is under the anterior capsule rim, shown with the yellow arrows. Thank you for your attention.